Hello, my friend. Hello. Can you hear It's, me? I can hear you. I can see you. And for at least for now, you're not frozen, Andreas. <laughs> okay, but I can dance if you like. <laughs> you, you can do that. And uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for for taking time on a little bit of a short notice to be with me here on our very first pre uh, And it is not my pleasure. The, thank you for not, inviting me. Of course, it's not only the first trooper for uh, pre trooper for uh, for online here. It's actually my very first pre trooper at all. But that is not the case for you guys. I guess that you have been with trooper. I can't remember how many times, but you tell me in a second, right? Oh my God! Yeah, I I should keep it as a secret. Yeah, because it's such a long time. Uh, I was. Uh, 18 years old. So in 1977, when I joined the first time Drupa, mm -hmm. I had a, a, a job, a freelance job during my school holidays. And I had a driver license and uh, I worked for a printing company in Mainz, the leading one. And they were a good customer of uh, uh, Mon Roland, Roland at that time. And we printed uh, brochures and collaterals. And I had uh, to deliver it just in time at the very first day of Drupal to Düsseldorf to their to their um, to their hall, which was really a challenge because I never expected to find a place which was so crowded. Yeah. Mm. And but at least I made it, and I got mm. a short uh, impression uh, of the the beauty and and uh, the value of of Drupal at that time. And since that, I joined every Drupal. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we had 16 troopers in the past since 1951, and I joined uh, uh, 11, I think. Mm -hmm. It's quite amazing. And, and when I asked, you asked me yesterday or two days ago what, what we should talk about, I said, why not uh, take it a little bit down memory lane? And I was just thinking, Andreas, because I mean, in 77, uh, 18 years old, uh, fresh and new uh, in the industry and uh, curious as ever and uh, inexperienced as you are not now. Uh, how how was it? I mean, do you remember when you got into this? Uh, I mean, of course, you were in the industry, but I mean, when you got into Drupal and saw the holes and the exhibitors and, and the size of uh, even Drupal at that time. So how, how was, I mean, do you remember your first uh, impression from it? Uh Yes, the impression was, oh, it, it's so big, it's so crowded, yeah. And a lot of noise and uh, uh, thousands or ten thousands of people running around like a chicken without a head uh, because uh, navigation at that time was not that easy. But uh, the beauty of my experience is that uh, I had, I played so many different roles uh, at the Drupal. So first of all, man and a freelancer and I had a, I had a little job uh, and later on I became an exhibitor as well and was or responsible for uh, ACFA organizing the booth in a, in a team which was more than two years work to get things prepared two years. Uh, then I joined it wow. yeah hmm. yeah and then uh, just to 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 get uh, the best uh, um, uh, Uh, ideas for for running a great show and and uh, to to involve the, the the customers the audience and also the the colleagues and employees uh, that that's a lot of work and also the logistics and an end mm. uh, so i had this as an exhibitor and then i switched i became a consultant and a journalist and an analyst And then I had access to all the VIP areas at Drupal, which is a totally different experience. So if you are a normal visitor, it, it's nice. But if you are a preferred guest, and also if you have uh, NDAs, it's it's absolutely fantastic. And uh, what I've learned is that uh, uh, the year 2000, which was uh, the Gutenberg year, the man of the millennium, and uh, Drupal was big, 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 and, and from the commercial side, the, the most successful Drupal forever. Uh, that was the point when it turned, had this, this transformation from a marketplace to a platform for success with print. 
which is a huge difference. So and, what you say, uh, so, so, yeah. so sorry to interrupt you. So basically what you say is that, you know, you come from, let's say, a uh, exhibition time where it's more about just putting some equipment in some halls and then people go and see that to become something that is developing the entire in industry. Is that uh, correctly understood or? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, Steve Jobs said, uh, and, and I agree to that, uh, communication first, product second. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's absolutely true. So uh, it, uh, in the past, it was beautiful because the, the pre-trooper communication started when the exhibitors start their preparation work. So mm -hmm. more or less two years in advance. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Drupa could be successful if this pre trooper communication in the public was successful. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, tricky with uh, the Drupa this year after that uh, eight years of having no Drupa. So mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people who are also involved in the Drupa committee, Ralph Samek is one of those persons. Uh, mm -hmm. I love his, his, uh, his, uh, his expression. Uh, he wants to be a trusted advisor, you know, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm into the right direction it's mm -hmm. not about a uh, product and and uh, i call it always feature fucking sorry for mm -hmm. that word but they talk about resolution and, and speed and, and that, that's not the point it's all about the value uh, of print communication and the success with print in in the digital age and mm -hmm. to be a trusted advisor is 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 a good is a good expression for that yeah Mm. What you have, um, to do mm. but I was just thinking because I I like that uh, expression too, and and uh, if I had been fast enough, I would of course have clicked on the beep button, but I didn't have time for it, so you were too fast and <laughs> <laughs> Or Europe, we d or Europe, we don't give beep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, we are all about people. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> no, uh, but the trusted advisor role, I think, it's great also because I mean. Uh, I know that the printing equipment, of course, has always been like massive investments for the printing companies. But I think that the the prices have increased dramatically over time uh, for a couple of reasons. And, and maybe you can maybe you can say that you agree or disagree with me. But I was just thinking that with uh, fewer machines in the market, each machine should produce more. And to produce more. Uh, it needs to be more efficient. And when it needs to be more efficient, it needs to be more automated. When it has more computers and more servers and more of everything, basically gets both more expensive and more complex, but of course still more profitable and more productive. But that, of course, also changes the market because it's not like having a, you know, a stencil uh, a printing press where you just put a piece of paper in and, and, and reproduce it. Everything has totally changed over the it just from 77 to now, I mean, the technology has has developed rapidly, right? Yeah, the uh, that also uh, that started in, 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 let's say, in the early 90s, where we have this uh, industrialization, industrialization of, uh, of the printing uh, uh, processes in, 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 in total. And I can remember in 2016, so the last Trupa, uh, Peter Sommer was still in charge uh, at that time for Elanders, and he not only bought digital uh, machines, uh, digital printing machines, also offset machines, and he bought two new ones to uh, 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 to uh, to skip six older machines. Wow! And <clears throat> that is that is uh, impressive, and also the way print shops. Uh, are running machines in two or three shifts is different compared to the past. Yeah. yeah. So the productivity uh, today is is so high, and on the other hand, the number of uh, printing companies is shrinking. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's clear that we will have not four hundred thousand uh, uh, visitors for Drupa anymore because mm -hmm. the number of companies is going down and also mm. the number of executives joining mm. Drupa really to 
to achieve new solutions and products mm. is shrinking as well. I, yeah. was, I was I was wondering because um, when uh, Ralph Samick was right uh, talking about uh, the uh, the the of course the need of Drupal and also how important it is for for the exhibitors to be there, mm. and he spoke about that it was a kind of like a new fresh start because it's like eight years ago. Mm. I kind of agree with him, but I'm also wondering because you know uh, younger generations of uh, of printing companies and owners may not see um, i mean they may not go to drupal for 11 days and just browse the aisles, uh, aisles. they might go there for one or two days and have a meetings or, or planned meetings in advance and things like that do you think it is a platform for the future or do you think it's more like something that will eventually let's say cease or or, or what do you see drupal in that perspective yeah, that's a good point, uh, Martin, because in the past, Drupa was something like the Olympics for mm. the print world, yeah, worldwide. Mm. Mm. And uh, because of uh, all those things happening uh, in 2020, uh, caused by the pandemic, uh, Drupa is more or less the phantom of the opera, yeah. And uh, a lot of a lot of people today, they have no experience with Drupa and they have no relationship to the roots of Drupa. And that is important to understand uh, and have a good reason to go there and to exhibit there. Mm -hmm. we, mostly we talk about uh, one side of the, of the medal, which, is, uh, which are the exhibitors. But on mm -hmm. the other hand, it's the expectation of the visitors mm -hmm. and also to attract a new audience. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you need a good communication. If there is a disruption over a timeline of eight years, it's mm -hmm. so difficult, yeah? Because mm -hmm. uh, let's say eight years ago or 20 years ago, Trupa was so unique, there was mm -hmm. no competition. Today, mm -hmm. um, you compare it automatically with any other event you are joining, yeah? yeah. And, and that's a, a little bit... Mm. And it's funny that you say that. Yeah, and it's funny that you say that because I, when I I see uh, see Drupa and I see and talk to the exhibitors today, um, I I was I mean the reason why we do this pre Drupa and the reason why we on LinkedIn do these daily small articles about different exhibitors is because I want to kind of bridge the past and the, and the, and the present and I want to also create a hype about it but it's not so many media that is have started already and maybe we're a little bit too early because it put a lot of pressure to write 144 articles before the Drupa of course right but on the other hand I think that it is important to to you know also use the electronic media to kind of bridge people into it. And you have to make a short answer because I'm actually having um, my dear friend Anna from Poland, who's also an editor. So I'm, of course, interested in talking to her about yeah. uh, how she sees that. But but very briefly, do you agree with me that, that, that we need to actually talk more about Drupal now in order to make sure that it becomes a success? Absolutely. And my experience is... Uh... Uh, being a, a social media enthusiast, uh, enthusiast uh, for, for a long time, uh, that when you use social media to create awareness in advance, you can address exactly those uh, f first movers and people who, are, uh, who have uh, really a demand and a special expectation. You can attract them and lead them. It's not about announcing I'm in hall one and my and have the biggest uh, booth uh, so that's that's not the message that worked in the past but not today so today it's about having a good conversation uh, in advance and start as early as you can and so I like your approach and say hello to Anna she is a wonderful person and she could uh, share with you the the pain of being an editor in the print world today or the beauty I don't know Let's hear her in a second, but thank you very much, Andreas.